Step 2. Rules and rule sets. In this step, we're going to think about the question, how do the nodes know what actions to perform and when to perform them? Nodes must take coordinated actions, and these actions are often conditioned on what happened at other nodes in the network. For example, we have the example of entanglement swapping, where node B here in the middle first needs to know that it's sharing an, a bell pair with node 1, and it's also sharing a bell pair with node 3. So it it's waiting for confirmation, either from a BSA uh, somewhere in between node 1 and node 2, and node 2 and node 3, or from node 1 and node 3 themselves, depending on the link architecture. Another example is purification or error detection, where both nodes need to know that they are sharing two at, or at least two entangled pairs. So option number one is to use centralized control. This is done by uh, having a central node that coordinates all of these actions of other nodes inside the network. So all the central node does is gather information from network nodes, and then it creates instructions which are then distributed to the nodes, and then they perform the corresponding actions. Of course, there are immediate shortcomings. The first one is the tremendous amount of classical communication that constantly has to go back and forth between the nodes and the central node. Also, while the central node is gathering the information and creating instructions for the other nodes, there's an unnecessary delay where quantum resources are degrading due to decoherence while these instructions are being created by the central node. So clearly, this approach is not very scalable and not very good for us. The second option that we're going to consider are what are known as rule sets. These are a set of rules controlling the behavior of a quantum node. For example, here we have three nodes, node 1, 2, and 3, and each node has its own rule set. There's rule set number 1 for node 1, rule set number 2 for node 2, and rule set number 3 for node 3. And these rule sets tell the nodes how to behave, what to do, and when. So the design goals of rule sets are the following. Uh, they are um, designed to achieve decentralized control of our quantum nodes. So each node follows its own local script. It doesn't have to give information to a central node and wait for the instructions back. Also, they allow for autonomous behavior. The nodes are mostly independent from other nodes. Thirdly, they also allow for coordinated behavior, despite uh, the lack of centralized control. So neighboring nodes uh, uh, how to behave and when to work together. Also, they are de the rule sets are designed in such a way that only minimal exchange of classical messages is needed. Again, we don't want to be passing too much classical data between the networks. This would just slow down the performance of the network. Let's look at an example behavior. Here we've got a very simple linear no um, network of five nodes, A, B, C, D, E. And we are trying to connect uh, A to E via highly purified, high fidelity entangled pairs. So first what the nodes start doing is A and B, they generate quantum resources in the form of bell pairs uh, that they share, which then they can purify. And so do other pairs of nodes, B and C, C and D, D and E. Once the purification step is done, the nodes are ready to swap. B is now sharing a purified entanglement with A and with C, so it can perform entanglement swapping over here. While this is being done, nodes A and C are waiting. Also, node D is swapping, and C and E are waiting as well. Once we create bell pair entanglement between A and C, then we might wish to purify it even further. And then, once that is done, we perform entanglement swapping at D, at C, ultimately creating end-to-end -end entanglement between A and E. So here we have this layered structure where we start with purifying, uh, purifying bell pairs between A and B, and then once that is done, we proceed on to the next step. 
So here is the structure of a rule set. We've got a set of rules. In this case, we only have two rules, rule one and rule two. And we assign to rule one some quantum resources in the form of entangled bell pairs. Only rule one is allowed to manipulate these bell pairs. Each rule is composed of a set of conditions, also known as conditional clauses. And once all of these conditions are satisfied, they are true, then a corresponding action is carried, carried out. This action could be anything from applying a unitary, measuring out certain qubits, to sending a classical message to a neighboring node. And after this is executed, we update the bell pair table over here. And once the rule set is finished, we promote the bell pairs that are sitting, that are locked to this rule, we promote them to the next rule, where the next, next set of conditional clauses and corresponding action clauses um, are located. So execution of a rule set follows a top-down execution. We start from rule one, once that is done, we promote to rule two, rule three, rule four, and so on. So resources are assigned to the topmost rule, as we have seen. Once this rule's condition clauses are satisfied, the corresponding action clauses are executed. The acted upon resources are passed to the next rule. And the process is repeated with the following rule. Important thing that we need is that the rule sets must contain a timeout clause. So the rule set needs to know um, when to free the resources and when to discard the rule set. Otherwise, the free resources will be locked and we will not be able to uh, proceed with our communication protocol. And the rule sets are created during the connection setup. We haven't talked about the connection setup yet, but it's waiting for us in step four in this lesson. This gives us a general overview of what rule and rule sets are, how they are designed, and what can they do. In the next step, we're going to look more closely at the conditional clauses and the action clauses. See you there.